And the most endangered species that I've ever photographed is... G'day guys, JJ here and thanks for joining me for another video. I hope you're all doing well. Now today we are going to be talking about endangered species wildlife photography. My experiences photographing some of the rarest animals on the planet. Now, if you haven't landed on this channel before or seen any of my videos, firstly, welcome. Here we're all about the wild side of travel, so everything wildlife, travel, adventure, photography, videography, a beautiful combination of all those things. And I will say I have been neglecting my wildlife fam a little bit lately, so this is gonna be quite a wildlife heavy video. Of course, I have to travel to all these destinations to see these amazing species, but you know who you are. Leave a comment down below if you're keen to see more wildlife content like this. Now, Today I'm going to share with you the top 10 most endangered species that I've ever photographed. And it's not necessarily going to be about the technical side of getting those shots. It's going to be more about the stories, what it was like finding these animals, what it was like being in the presence of these animals. Uh, endangered species are something that I am super passionate about. And I tell you what, I had my fair share of pinch myself moments seeing some of these animals in the flesh. Now photographing and filming these guys can be bittersweet because they're endangered. Most of them, their populations are decreasing, some of them at a very rapid rate. Uh, so I do wanna share a bit of conservation value about why these species are threatened, what's being done, and their estimated population. I wanna stress, estimated population because those numbers can vary quite wildly. But again, I wanna shed a positive light on this and, and how amazing these animals are. And what we can do as wildlife photographers to spread awareness by getting these guys on camera. That's certainly what I live for, mate. I absolutely love it. So the order I'm gonna go in here is starting with the species that have the highest population, moving along till I get to the rarest species I've ever photographed. So number one is the white-handed gibbon. Many of you know I volunteered with the Gibbon Conservation Society and they take in animals that were a part of the illegal wildlife trade. So a lot of infants that were taken from their families to become part of the pet trade and these animals should be in the wild and that's the ultimate goal of this uh, program is to release these guys back into the wild one day after they've gone through the rehabilitation process. Now photographing gibbons is incredibly difficult. They are one of the fastest animals out there and photographing any animal in the jungle is difficult let alone one that can swing through the trees at 60 kilometers per hour. Now a lot of the ones I got to see were actually juveniles and uh, they're a little bit slower but it was still, you know, difficult to focus on those guys and get those action shots them swinging around. Occasionally they would stop and stare at you. And one thing I love about photographing gibbons and all primates is when you make that eye contact, you're looking into such an intelligent soul. And they've just got so much personality, particularly these younger gibbons who are just so cheeky and just some of the faces they pull were absolutely hilarious. One of the most powerful shots I've ever taken was of this individual here. His name is Dexter, and I actually started my volunteer work on the day that he was rescued. Now, obviously this image has been edited somewhat, but it goes back to how powerful that eye contact can be, especially with primates and with apes. This image gives me goosebumps to this day. Dexter had just been rescued. At the risk of being anthropomorphic and putting human emotions into an animal, just his eyes, he was sad, he was struggling before he made it to the Gibbon Conservation Society. I'm happy to say now he is thriving, he's doing really, really well. Uh, he's much stronger, he sings every day. This photo I hold very dear, it circulated quite wildly and got people supporting this society and the amazing work they do, so I'm quite proud of that. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit about these Gibbons and hopefully one day with the work they're doing, these guys can release them out in the wild and go back and take more photos of them then. The next species on the list is the Wandering Albatross. Now these guys are known for having the largest wingspan on the planet, over three meters. They're classified as vulnerable and there's around 55,000 of them left in the wild. Now these guys nest in New Zealand and in the subantarctic islands, although you'll find them foraging and feeding all across the southern oceans. And uh, these guys were foraging in Kaikoura when I was there a couple of years ago, and Kaikoura has just got the most epic backdrop for photographing any species. And I was able to get some really cool wide shots with the mountains in the background, as well as some tight shots of these albatross. Very charismatic birds. A lot of people think they're just big seagulls, but mate, they're much more than that. The majority of albatross species are threatened, some are even critical critically endangered because of long line fishing, uh, plastic pollution. These guys will often ingest those microplastics. And in some areas, these guys are even getting taken out by introduced pests that eat the eggs and the chicks on those islands. So there is some good work being done to minimize the amount of pests on those islands, try to remove them completely so these guys can thrive because they're a very long lived species. They have seen more of the world than I probably ever will. They've been known to travel thousands of kilometers in a matter of weeks. So 
Really cool species I was able to see and the biggest wingspan on the planet. Now the next species on the list is another seabird. This is the African penguin. Now a lot of people are surprised to hear that penguins live in Africa. Uh, they do. This species is local to the southern countries in Africa. It numbers around 50,000 individuals and is classified as endangered. Now the easiest place to see these guys is Boulders Beach in South Africa. And that's where I saw them. You used to be able to get amongst the penguins and basically get on the beach with them, but they have managed that a bit better now. They've built these walkways all around the place that you can kind of get amongst the penguins, but there is that definite barrier where they can have their space, we can have our space. And what was fun photographing these guys was seeing the interactions. Obviously they form very strong bonds with each other and with their chicks, and then getting shots of those fluffy chicks. Those guys are absolutely hilarious. Don't look much like their parents to begin with. Now these guys do have a lot of threats and their numbers are decreasing quite rapidly. One of them is climate change. Climate change is changing the currents and other systems out in the ocean, which means these guys have got to go further or dive deeper to find their food. Uh, overfishing has also complemented that. It is quite common for these guys to be impacted by oil spills as well. But there are some fantastic organizations on the southern coastlines of Africa that are rehabilitating these guys and they regularly get released back into the wild to supplement that population, which is really cool. Now this next species is very, very close to home. It is of course the iconic Australian koala. Now, do I have the right qualifications to make this claim? Koalas are not bears. People call them koala bears. It's not true at all. These guys, of course, are marsupials, just like kangaroos, which means they have a pouch. And I'm lucky to live so close to these guys here on the Gold Coast. I can drive down the road a couple of minutes and normally find them, but that is bittersweet in itself because uh, even the area where I live and, and areas that are expanding, what's happening is it's taking out the koala habitat. These guys are having to cross roads to, to find more habitat or find mates. They're often getting picked on by dogs, getting hit by cars, and uh, it is thought that the population of koalas could be as low as 43,000, which is absolutely horrifying. It has dropped so massively, particularly in Queensland and New South Wales. And uh, I cannot imagine a world without koalas. So we're really gonna have to pick up our game and, and the government's really gonna have to work to protect these guys because they are just such an incredible species that we don't wanna be without. Now, koalas don't do a lot when you're photographing them. They can sleep for 18 hours plus every single day. And to even see them low in the trees is quite rare. So I've definitely taken advantage of that when I have seen them lower in the trees. This shot here, I experimented with my aperture a bit to try and get a bit of a, a flare with this beautiful girl that was nice and low. But my favorite shot I've ever taken of a koala was kind of only of a quarter of a koala. What I tried to depict here was that these guys are running out of places to hide. So I tried to frame the shot in a way that he wasn't in the entire photograph. And mate, what can I say? They are just such a beautiful, iconic species. I've been able to work with them. I've been able to see them in the wild and I hope I'll get to do that for many years to come. Now the next animal on the list is the white rhino. And these guys are the largest species I'm gonna be talking about today. They number around 18,000 individuals and are classified as near threatened. Now, the reason these guys are threatened, we all know too well, it's because of poaching, for the illegal wildlife trade. People removing their horns for all sorts of stupid, crazy reasons. And that's what's got these guys on the threatened species list. My first encounter with wild white rhinos wasn't from the safety of a Jeep or a vehicle. We actually went looking for these guys on foot. So I was in Zimbabwe and uh, we went out with our guides, which picked up where the rhinos were straight away. And we got so close to these two individuals. It was two females. And yeah, our group was just there in the grass, just staying still and silent because, you know, we were so close to these animals and they were absolutely massive. Now it was through pretty thick brush and we were so close, it was difficult to get the whole animal in the shot. I tried to kind of deconstruct the images a little bit and show parts and bits and pieces. And a bit like the koala photo, I tried shooting through the vegetation to kind of show these guys hiding. They're running out of places to hide. So one of the management practices for these guys is to actually remove their horn. Uh, it's just like fingernails. They can cut it back to a certain point uh, without actually harming the rhino whatsoever. And that's a deterrent to try and stop poachers from targeting these individual animals. Next, we have the critically endangered Sumatran orangutan. And it's estimated there's only around 13,000 of these guys left on the island of Sumatra. Now I've seen two of the three species of orangutan in the wild, which is it, absolutely insane. I never thought I'd be able to say that, but I've seen the Bornean orangutans and I've seen the Sumatran orangutans. And recently there was a third species described in the very north of Sumatra. Now on that trip, I think we saw about a dozen individual orangutans, including massive males all the way down to little babies still with mum. And it was this big fella here, this big plate head orangutan that was right in front of us. He's literally sitting on the jungle floor at one point, checking us out. And that, 
was something I'll never forget. Again, that eye contact, being able to see him so close. Our guides were fantastic. They obviously made sure that he was comfortable, that we were safe as well. Of course, you never want to intrude on these guys too much. He's about 10 times as strong as me and I was able to get some fantastic photos at a really close distance and then we were able to carry on. So this beautiful mum with her little baby, uh, this girl was a lot more nervous, really quite high up, but I was able to spend a bit of time around her as well. And being so close to these guys that are so closely related to us is, is just, again, so, so humbling. I've been to Sumatra twice. I literally went back the very next year because I loved it so much. And I cannot wait to get back there again because these guys, they're, they're ugh, no words. No words. Now the next one is another Aussie species that is endemic to the country, the Australian sea lion. Now Aussie sea lions are endangered with only around 12,000 left in the southern and western parts of the country. And recent studies have shown those numbers are actually decreasing in a lot of their little subpopulations. Now these guys are the only seal that's endemic to Australia, meaning they're not found in any other country and they are just incredible. I've been able to see these guys on several occasions down on Kangaroo Island in a place called Seal Bay. And you can watch these guys and their interactions for ages. Now I've been able to get in the water with these guys as well. And all those shots were just on a GoPro, but you cannot beat the natural curiosity of a seal or sea lion. These guys are completely wild. They can do their own thing, but they just wanna come up and say good day. There's no food involved, nothing. Literally, if you're flipping around and swimming around, they wanna do the exact same and they'll come up right close to your camera, check out their reflection the lens. This shot here was of a beautiful pup and he was just making his way up the beach, calling for his mama, couldn't find her anywhere. And what I loved about this guy, he was like Phantom of the Opera. He had a sandy face on one side and his beautiful fluffy face on the other. He was calling away, calling his little head off and he ended up coming pretty close, which is how I got this shot. Now these guys are endangered for a few reasons and one of them is they are vulnerable to overfishing. These guys love eating fish and squid and so do we, so we compete with them for that. But another one is they've got a very bizarre breeding cycle. Generally speaking, seals and sea lions are pregnant for around 12 months. These guys are pregnant for 17.6 months, which is just so, so bizarre. And what that means is it takes a longer time for their population to increase because these guys have to look after their babies for longer. They've got to be pregnant for longer. If they get hammered by external pressures like overfishing or getting entangled in fishing gear, it just takes longer for that population to build up again. Next we have the cheetah. Now cheetahs number around 7,000 individuals and are classified as vulnerable. And this instance where we saw this animal in Kruger National Park in South Africa was a complete fluke. Our guide, an absolute legend of a bloke, spotted this cat around a kilometer away. We didn't see it for ages. It was coming towards us, but he's like, it's there, it's there. We did not see it for so long because they camouflage so well, but he had the eye for it. And this animal ended up coming closer and closer and closer between our vehicles, propped himself up on a rock for a little while, had a look around, assess the landscape. Now it, it was sheer luck. There are not many cheetahs in Kruger National Park. So we're able to get some really cool shots. I, I kind of played around with this shot, which was kind of trying to capture him in his environment, sneaking forward. But I think these close-ups are my favorites. He had a good old look around. When he was happy, he just headed on his way. And uh, yeah, how's that? Cheetah. Now the next one on the list is by far the most dangerous encounter I've had. Uh, not because anything went wrong, but just because there was the potential for so many things to go wrong. It was when I went to see Komodo dragons in Indonesia. Now, although Komodo Komodos are vulnerable to extinction and there's around 6,000 individuals left. It doesn't feel that way when you're on the island because these guys are absolutely everywhere. You can't go trekking on the islands without a guide. So I met up with my buddy Anton and we went out there for a couple of days exploring the island and getting super close to the largest and most dangerous lizard on the planet. These guys are fast, they're strong, they've got razor sharp teeth, they've got venom and they're not an animal that you want to stuff up around. So we were really aware of how we approached these animals. There were some that were in hunting mode, so we stayed well back from those guys. And there were others that had already had a big feed, were a bit more relaxed, and were able to get close and get some really nice close-ups. The only thing between us and the dragons was Anton's stick. It had like a V on the end, and that's kind of designed to push a dragon away if he comes too close. I was having the absolute best time, but you're just kind of sitting there with your heart pumping a little bit harder than usual because you just know the potential of these animals because they are one of the most prehistoric predators on the planet. It was literally like I'd been dropped in a Jurassic Park. Now I got one really cool opportunity to take some photos of some fighting dragons. And these guys are known for kind of squaring up together and wrestling, but it wasn't the season for that. So these guys were kind of just chasing each other around and they're not the sharpest shots, but being able to see these interactions and get them on camera and a little bit on film as well was really quite cool. Cause these guys, they, they showed how strong they were. They showed how fast they were. 
and uh, again, it was literally like being surrounded by dinosaurs. Now, the reason these guys are threatened isn't necessarily because of habitat loss or anything like that. They are sometimes victim to the illegal wildlife trade, people taking young dragons and eggs, but the main thing is because they are found on a series of volcanic islands and so few volcanic islands, if there was a big eruption or tsunami, it could take out the entire population in one go. So uh, there's not a whole lot of contingency that can be done to protect them from that sort of thing, but there are several zoos and wildlife parks which are very successful in breeding these guys. So hopefully if anything ever did happen, happen, uh, they could supplement the wild population again. Only two left on the list now, and this one was my bucket list animal when I went to visit Africa, the black rhino. Now black rhinos are critically endangered and only number around five and a half thousand individuals. Now when we got to Itosha National Park in Namibia, I asked my guide, what are the odds of seeing a black rhino? And he said, oh, you know, they sometimes come down to the waterhole. They normally like to come late in the evening or really early in the morning. Don't always see them, maybe you'll have some good luck. I saw four animals at once, really early in the morning, but there was four black rhino down at that watering hole. Another day, they came in just as the sun was setting and what a majestic animal. The sunsets in Africa are unreal, so I was able to get some really cool shots with beautiful like purple hues and an orange hues behind them as the sun was setting, come down, add their drink, and then back off into the sunset or back off into the dark. What an incredible animal. And just like the white rhinos, these guys are threatened because of poaching for that horn, which is just such a rotten shame. Now this last animal on the list may be a bit of a surprise to you guys. It's another penguin. It's called the yellow-eyed penguin. They're only found in New Zealand. There's only around 4,000 left and they're classified as endangered. Now the last time I was on the South Island of New Zealand, I was chasing marine animals. I was chasing albatross. I was chasing seals. I was chasing whales, dolphins. And the one animal that nearly eluded me was this yellow-eyed penguin. So they're normally found on the southern end of the South Island. And I went out to this lighthouse at a place called Moraki. I think it was called Moraki. And I uh, went looking, went looking, and didn't have much luck. Eventually I spotted one super far away. I think the bird was molting actually, and he was too far away to get any good shots or, or photos. And then this other fella came up super close, massive poser, and I was able to get some absolutely unreal shots of this guy. These are one of the prettiest penguins you could ever see. They've got the beautiful yellow feathers. Of course, they've got their yellow eyes, which is so obvious why they call them that. And this guy just hung around for a little bit, had a few yawns. You can see he's got a spiky tongue, which helps him to grip on the fish, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, he, he wasn't doing a whole lot, but he, he came nice and close, was able to get some photos. This is one of the rarest penguins on the planet, 4,000 individuals. I probably pass more people on my way to work in the car than there are individuals of this species. So to be able to see them was a real honor. One of the main threats for these guys is introduced pests. So rats and stoats and the like actually eating the eggs and the chicks. And mate, I really hope we don't lose yellow-eyed penguins because they are just such a charismatic bird, an icon of New Zealand. And uh, there's some good organizations helping them out and hopefully it makes a difference. And there you go, guys, my top 10 endangered species that I have photographed in the wild. These memories, I'm gonna have them for a lifetime. Again, I just pinched myself so many times when I was in the presence of these animals, knowing they're so rare, they're so unique, they've evolved over millions of years and we're somehow wiping them off the planet for, for various reasons. So again, it is bittersweet. I'm so grateful that I've been able to see them, but who knows if they'll even be there in 10 years time. So I think as wildlife photographers and filmmakers, it's our duty to, to get these shots, get this footage, get these photos and, and share it and create an awareness for these animals, but also to point people in the right direction of what they can do to protect them. There are so many fantastic conservation organizations out there doing their part to try and protect these species. And I think it's important as well to put our money where our mouth is. So if you are interested in buying any prints or canvases of uh, any of these species or any of these photos or other ones, be sure to head to my Instagram, which is jjemerson underscore wildlife, or hit me up with an email, which I'll pop down below too. And the first three prints that I sell, all that money will go to these three organizations. The Yellow Eyed Penguin Trust, the Gibbon Conservation Society, and SANCOB, the South African Foundation for the Conservation of Coastal Birds. Those guys help out the African penguins. Guys, I'm gonna put money into those. If you do purchase a print, it'll go straight there for the first three prints. I really do like to put my money where my mouth is. I've been able to assist conservation organizations over the years with photos that I've sold. So 
that's what I want to do. Definitely get in touch if you're interested in purchasing one. And there we have it, guys. That is the end of the video. That one was so much fun to film. It just flowed off the tongue because it's something I'm so passionate about. I love these guys so much. And I'm so passionate about traveling to see wildlife. It's one of the best things you can do as long as you're doing it in an eco-friendly and sustainable way. If you did enjoy the video, guys, give it a like because that really helps to, to get these videos out there so more people can see them. And also be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I've got a lot more planned. I'm going to try and combine this wildlife and this travel into a perfect little mix for you guys to cover all bases. Thanks for letting me ramble on guys and I'll see you in the next one.